um, I'm here today with um, Asim Badsha, founder and CEO at Sosito. Um, I'm super excited to have him here. Um, he's done events for us. Um, I'm Dorotka Margarito from Trade Digital, and I've wanted to sit down with him, so here's our opportunity. Um, so just to introduce him a little bit, um, he is an impressive, um, incredible marketer. Um, he's built a successful company, and um, he's also um, been touted um, by Inc. Magazine as a uh, uh, entrepreneur to watch in 2016 so we're very excited to speak with him so um, how are you today I'm doing great very excited to be live here at the Sosito offices with you yes um, and it's a beautiful office so um, I'm happy to be here so um, well let's um, just get down to our questions um, so what would you say is your top advice for anyone looking to generate leads with social media it's a very good question, right? I mean, I think um, a lot of people think about social media more as a broadcast channel. Um, and I think that the first step is starting to kind of change that paradigm and change that concept in your mind, right? I think most companies look at social um, just like they would traditional marketing, right? Build creative, let's get as many followers as possible and then publish out that content on a rolling basis. And so really the kind of traditional concept of lead generation on social media is Let's hope somebody sees my piece of content, they click on the link, they come in, they register, and then we capture them as a lead. What we found is that when it comes to lead generation, right, where you're going after a high value specific target audience, what works is what we like to call proactive social outreach. So instead of just publishing and letting somebody find that content and hoping that it gets retweeted, going and searching for now, who are the hundred people on Twitter that really should be using my product today based on how they describe themselves, based on who they're tweeting about, and go engage with them proactively from a one-to-one -one perspective. So instead of just waiting for them to kind of see your post and then hope that they click on the link, go talk to them. Go tell them why they should be interested in your product, why they should be interested in your service. That's what we find really kind of leads to true ROI, true lead generation, is kind of getting out of that mindset that it's just about building an audience and publishing and then build it, we'll see if they come, to go find those people who have already shown that they have a need for your product, they have a, an interest in your product, and go talk to them directly. So be proactive and reach out to them and target. That sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Okay, um, which social media platforms work the best for lead generation? That's a good question. So, you know, I think by far uh, Twitter is kind of out and ahead of the pack. Um, one of the reasons being is because Twitter gives you this very kind of rich real-time information flow, right? So people are constantly tweeting what they're reading, what events they're going to, uh, who influences them, and all of that is really good information for you to start a conversation, right? It's public on Twitter, unlike on Facebook, where most of that stuff is private. The other nice thing about Twitter is that it gives you the ability to connect with strangers in a one-to-one -one fashion uh, at scale, right? So you can go and you can engage with 10 people a day, right? You can follow hundreds of people a day, which you can't do from a branded presence on LinkedIn or Facebook. The challenge with Twitter is that you don't necessarily really have like rich professional information on yeah. Twitter like you would on LinkedIn, right? So on LinkedIn, you get a very rich resume database, uh, but it's static, right? There's right. no way to really kind of contact somebody or see what they might be doing today, this week, what events they're going to. I think Twitter is the best, and then you can kind of roll in LinkedIn on top of that, right? So what we find works really well is you get the best of both worlds. if as you're communicating with somebody on Twitter, you look them up on LinkedIn, we figure out who they are, what's their job title, are they the right fit, but then you leverage Twitter as the way to actually communicate with them. I see. Now there's other social networks that have similar tendencies to Twitter, right? So you think about Instagram, it works in a very similar way. Everything's public, everything's real time, you can communicate with people one to one. Right. Uh, Instagram is obviously much more on the B2C and the lifestyle side of things right. than Twitter where folks are having more B2B conversations. I see, so Twitter and LinkedIn more for B2B. Absolutely. Okay. Um, can you tell us about the best way to engage with potential leads on social? Yeah. 
So it all starts, um, well, we like to think of it as a progression, right? So I think a lot of folks, they hear this notion of proactive social outreach. And their first kind of inclination is, okay, cool, I'm going to go send 100 tweets to people telling them to buy my product, right? Um, well, we want to think about it more as a progression, like you would kind of an inbound marketing funnel, where you start by kind of putting a light touch on folks, right? So all these social networks give you the ability to like somebody's post, to follow them, to view their profile, and that sends them a notification, right? A notification to their phone, just like a text message, right. to email, to twitter.com, or the actual social network as a notification. That gets you on their radar, right? So you can do that to hundreds of people a day, and they're proactively going to see your brand, see your value proposition, see your content. Then you follow the inbound marketing methodology, where those people who engage back with you, who follow you or like your tweet or retweet you, now you know those are the people that are engaged, right? They've raised their hand, they've said that they're interested in your content, in your value proposition, in your brand, those are the people now to take to the next level in kind of the conversion funnel. I see. So how do you do that? Well, now that they've engaged with you, you can send them a direct message. You can send them a private message. Maybe you comment to them directly. And that's where you still want to offer something of value, right? You don't want to go straight to, hey, buy my product. Uh, you know, you're still relatively early in the, in the conversation, right? We're dating. We're not jumping straight to marriage just right, yet. Right. Um, but they've shown interest, right? And so that's where you can kind of offer a highly valuable top of funnel piece of content, a webinar, an ebook, a free trial, an offer, a promotion. Make it very specific, make it valuable, and that's a way to then get them in your funnel, right? Because they go to that landing page, they fill out their information, and you capture them that way. That really is what works, right? If you kind of think of it as this progression, as a light touch, a medium touch, and for those people who follow you, you may want to take it even a step further, right? If a, if a Fortune 500 CIO shows interest in you and you've got a product to sell them, maybe they didn't click on the link, maybe they didn't go to your webinar, but that's where you can go and connect with them on LinkedIn, right? Or you can go and email them or call them and reference that you just made a connection on Twitter. That's going to be a nice, warm introduction to really get the ball rolling. Okay, so progression, light touch, and then Touch. Medium touch, and then from there you can kind of go to a heavy touch as well, right? And heavy touch is really where we start to think about a little bit more of a multi-channel approach. So you're having this conversation on Twitter, okay, now we're going to take it to LinkedIn. Now we're going to take it to email, now we're going to take it to phone. Um, I mean, let's be honest, right? We're not selling $100,000 products on Twitter, right? You've still got to have a conversation, you've still got to meet with somebody. Twitter is your entry point. But you want to move that to the next communication channel once you've kind of shown that, hey, that person has an interest, we've got a conversation, we've got an engaged lead. I see. So it's a progression, moving them through the separate Exactly. Channels. Makes sense. Think of it just like you would any other marketing funnel. Makes sense. So there is so much noise on Twitter. Do you feel direct messages are still effective? So it's a, it's, a, it's a really good question, right? Because I think that we all get these automated direct messages that say, hey, thanks for following. Come like my page on Facebook as well. And, right. and I think we I've all- I've gotten that and I ignore it. <laughs> we all turn it, tune it out, right? Um, but we all tune out emails. We all tune out phone calls, right? I mean, this is marketing and we've sure. got to get above the fold. Now what we find with direct messages is that because somebody just showed interest in they just followed you, they just engaged with you. If you can send that direct message as something far more valuable than just, hey, thanks for following, right? Hey, first name, right? Use their name, be personal. I saw that you were tweeting about this conference and I think that you'd enjoy this webinar that's about the same topic. Now you're gonna get higher engagement. Now you've gotten yourself above the noise. And what we see is that when you do it that way, we see average click-through rates between 10 and 20% wow. across our 150 plus customers, right? So when you compare that to email marketing, which is normally one or 2% click-through rates, right. you're getting a 10X lift by leveraging something like a direct message. That's huge. So it does work, you've gotta do it the right way, and you've gotta make sure that you're elevating your brand above the noise, right? And, 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 I mean, you draw a lot of parallels to email marketing, right? So think five, 10 years ago, People were kind of doing the same thing that people are doing on direct messages on email, right? Just 
blasting content out, spamming people, not thinking about personalization, not thinking about segmentation, um, and now that's what we're doing on email, right? Now it's still tough, you still have to get above the noise, it's still cluttered, but when you take that same concept of segmentation and personalization to social, that's where you start to get magnitudes increase more engagement, right? That's how we get from 2% click-through rates to 20% click-through rates. Wow, okay. So segmentation and personalization. Um, do you feel that the B2B and B2C social media funnels are vastly different? You've got to look at them differently, right? I, I mean, I think, you know, B2B, so the way that I kind of think about it instead of just B2B and, and B2C is really more a progression on price point and how high touch your sales cycle is, right? So on one end, you might have products that you're selling for $20, right? You're not gonna have a salesperson that's going in and selling that product right. for $20. You're not gonna be able to afford the time to talk to them on the phone and things like that. So it could be a B2B product that you're selling for $20, or it could be a B2C product that you're selling for $20, but you probably wanna handle it the same way. Okay. On the other side of the spectrum, you've got a B2B product that's a million dollars. And of course there, you're gonna be able to invest in a year-long sales cycle, very high touch, multi-stakeholder approach. You may be able to fly to them and wine and dine them and take them out for a steak dinner. So they're two different models. Right. Whether you're B2B or B2C, you wanna think about where you fall on this progression. So how does social lead gen change depending on where you fit on this progression? Well, if you're on this side and your product is a relatively cheap, you gotta be high volume, you don't have time to get everybody on the phone, that's where you wanna make sure that the link that you're sending in the DM is something that's highly valuable. Because that's gonna be where people have to convert, right? You're not gonna have the time to manually follow up with people, manually reach out to people. And so that's where you wanna think about it more as like a scalable content play, right? Where you're sending people to this link. On the other side, this is where you actually have the ability to be very, very high touch and manual. So instead of maybe sending people to a link, you may want to do that anyway, but you're gonna have the time now to follow up with everybody manually, right? So again, that CIO follows you, they showed that interest in you, maybe they didn't click on the link, well that person should go directly into your CRM, that account executive now has the ability to reach out to them. And they're gonna reach out multiple times. They're gonna put in the time and energy. They're gonna think about who else is in the, in the organization. Are they on Twitter? They're gonna go connect with them on LinkedIn. So that's really the difference, right? Is how high touch can you get? Do you have a sales team that can support you with manual outreach? Or is it really all kind of take them to a website, get them to sign up, and that's kind of the extent of the, the conversion funnel. So I think that's the better way to think of it. And then B2B and B2C will kind of fall in, in various places along that spectrum. I see, very good. So what top resources or blogs would you recommend for anyone who is, who is starting on social media? Yeah, so um, you know we've got a great blog. It's blog.socio.com if you want to check it out. Um, I think HubSpot puts out some really, really good materials. They've got the HubSpot Academy. I would definitely recommend that. Uh, social Media Examiner is great when you really want to get focused on social. Um, and then, you know, as you kind of start to think about like lead generation, demand generation, this kind of idea of moving people through a funnel, you've got really great resources, the Marketo blog, Serious Decisions. They're going to focus less on social, but they're going to focus a lot on that paradigm of moving people through a marketing funnel. Right, and so when you put those two together, that's going to be a really good set of resources to start thinking about social media lead generation, social media demand generation as a whole. I see. So, um, so Cedo Blog, HubSpot, and third one you said. So, so Cedo Blog, HubSpot, uh, Social Media Examiner social is media a great Examiner. one. Uh, Marketo and okay. and their publications, and then uh, Serious Decisions is a really good one, especially for the B two B marketers that's thinking about. How do we take leads and pass them off to a sales team? They really nailed the whole progression and, and kind of what that funnel should look like. Excellent information. So what tools in addition to Socito do you recommend? I guess that's kind of what we just went over. Yeah, so I mean, you know, kind of embellishing on that, right? We, we really kind of think about um, 
a couple different tools that are adjacent to what we do here at Socito. So Socito is a fantastic platform to go and find your audience on something like Twitter, to engage with them automatically through that progression, and then to actually get all of these contacts and import them into your CRM. Well, that's something that you definitely want, right? A CRM system or a marketing automation system. So we integrate directly with Salesforce, with HubSpot, with Marketo. Fantastic. All of those are really, really good platforms to follow up with leads, right? right? If you're doing social media lead generation, you want to have a system that's going to allow you to actually follow up with those leads. That's important. These three are fantastic at that, and any other of the marketing automation or CRM systems will kind of do the same trick. Okay. Then on the other end, as you do social media lead generation, right, this whole concept of proactive social outreach, you're going to start to build a really nice following, right? And of course, you still want to publish to that following, you want to schedule out messages, you want to make sure that as they're responding to you, you're responding to them. That's where your traditional social media management platforms come in. Okay. Something like Hootsuite, Sprout Social, Octopost, Sprinkler, all of these are really good tools. So that's kind of your magical toolkit when it comes to social media lead generation. A social media management platform like Hootsuite or Sprout Social so CEO to kind of link the two together, right? Really find the right audience and automate those engagements and then plug them into your CRM or marketing automation system. Great information. Good to have that toolbox. What are the top three mistakes marketers make on social media, would you say? So we've talked about a few of these, right? I mean, I think the biggest is just viewing it as a broadcast platform. Right? I mean, this has been the notion of marketing for the last like 100 years, right? Is build creative and buy eyeballs. Okay, I've got a good creative concept. We're going to go put that on TV. We're going to go put it on a billboard. We're going to go put it in a magazine. And the natural tendency is to take the same kind of perspective and bring it to social. That's We're just publishing and, and building following for the sake of it. So I think switch that mentality. The second that we talked about a little bit is not being valuable to the person on the other end, going straight into the sale, trying to push them right into a demo or a trial. Instead, figure out like what is that thing that you can offer them that's valuable, that's more at the top of the funnel. Webinars, eBooks, you know, content is always a great place to start. Yeah. Um, so I think those are kind of the two that I think we see most often that I would really kind of you know um, suggest you think about you know as you start kind of thinking about your social strategy. So really, not customizing enough. Exactly, exactly. Be so specific, right? I think that is probably the third one that we could add is um, segment, right? Be personal, be specific to the audience that you're talking about. That's going to uh, really allow you to kind of win and see much higher engagement rates and really get your bang for your buck, right? I mean, this is the big question is what's the ROI of being on social? And if you do these things, segment, personalize, you're going to start to see that ROI very quickly. So segment and personalize. Good to know. Um, so just a question, apart from these questions about social media, um, you're a very successful entrepreneur and um, it's pretty difficult to um, have a successful startup. So I'm wondering, do you have any advice, um, because you built yourself you know, a, a great company here, do you have any advice for um, new entrepreneurs out there trying to build a good startup? Yeah, it's, I mean it's hard, right? And, and, and it's only getting harder as it becomes easier and easier to build these technologies, host them in the cloud, put a whole bunch of APIs together to come up with, with something valuable. That's the key, is it valuable? And the only way to figure that out is to have real customers using it, right? So from day one, I think the, the trap that a lot of entrepreneurs fall into, and we did as well, is you build something for yourself. Uh, and that's great because you're passionate about it and it means that you can spend countless hours on it and that's where you want to start. But as quickly as possible, get other people using it. Because it's not real until somebody else is using right. it. And go further than that, get somebody paying for it. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's your first three weeks and you've got a prototype and it's all janky and beta, alpha, whatever it is. Go ask somebody to pay for it. Because you don't know if it's actually valuable until somebody pays for it. There's so many nice to have and there's cool things, right? And everybody's going to be nice to you as you ask for feedback and they're just going to say, yeah, I'll use that. But once you say, would you pay me $10 for it? That's when you get the real feedback, right? So I think those are the two make biggest it things. Real. <laughs> exactly. Make it real, right? Make, make it real, find real customers and get them to pay for it as quickly as possible. Great. Fantastic advice. 
So thank you so much for all your great information and congratulations um, on what you've built here so far. Um, and thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for sitting with yeah, me. Yeah, thanks so much. This is great. It. This is fun. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. All right.